I'm Susie and this is me potentially starting a new little adventure in sharing um, what I like to do with wool and fibre and knitting and spinning and a little bit of crochet basically. Um, yeah, so I have loved watching other people's creative podcasts on YouTube for a long time and I figured that it was about time I actually shared some of what I'm passionate about and whether you're interested or not, we'll see where it goes. Um, yeah, so a little bit about me. I'm really bad for fidgeting, I'll try not to. Um, <laughs> I'm Susie and I'm originally from Devon. Um, my parents farm down there and I've very recently moved up to Dumfries and Galloway in the southwest of Scotland um, to start a new job, which I might talk about another time. but. All very exciting um, yeah so my my whole life I've been very involved with sheep um, my parents farm sheep I um, I actually studied to be a vet at uni which is why I've moved um, and then I spent a lot of the last five years in between uni working as a wool handler in sort of the southwest of England and a little bit of shearing as well so yeah, my hobbies align quite well, shall we say, from kind of every aspect of producing and lambing sheep and right up through to shearing them and then spinning and working with the finished wool product. So a lot of what I want to do really is just share um, a bit about that process. What is, is it sustainable? Like, should we be doing this? Um, and yeah, maybe talk through a bit of the process of all of that. So yeah, I am going to just kick off and share. I've got a bunch of things, a general pile of madness here that I'd like to talk about. Um, but I'll start with, as seems to be standard, what I'm wearing. I have got two layers of knitwear today because it's a bit chilly and it's, it's pretty windy outside. So I hope that is not too obvious in the background. Um, yeah, so my first layer I actually forgot to look up what it's called. Chaika. This is the Chaika by Midori Hirose. So I knit the three quarter length very cropped body um, option. And the the yoke, the collar bit, is knit in some iron weight, 100% wool, undyed. It came from a relative's stash. It calls itself Peruvian Highland wool. I can't find any more sense than that, but it's really nice and soft and proper woolly. Um, and then the main body is um, three strands held together actually. Two strands of um, Emma from Woolly Mammoth Fibre Companies. Um, I think it's her BFL Gotland blend, I think, if I remember rightly, in the colour Wildflower. And then the third strand is um, Hampshire Four Ply from the Grey Sheep Co in the colour milkshake which I just fell in love with and I think the pink the milkshake colour is pinks and purples and the purples fit the wildflower just perfectly and yeah it's I'm very purple and pink today which is not normally me but I'm I'm liking this yeah and so my other layer is my soldatna tea um you can see that I still have ends not woven in whoops um my Soldatna tea, which is um, lots of colour work, I'll just show you. Lots and lots of colour work. It was actually my first colour work tea, it's just got short sleeves and I absolutely love it. It's super, super warm. I cannot remember all of the yarn views off the top of my head, but if you have a look on my Ravelry page, which is Susie C Crafts, um, that's got all the information on it, but it's, it's all wool. Um, as is pretty much 95% of what I make, to be honest. Um, speaking of, I have actually got some alpaca blend beep, socks on of just a very basic um, ribbed sock that I just sort of bodged and they fit, so it's fine. Um, talking of socks, um, I'm going to talk about a couple of... I haven't actually got a huge number of things on the needles at the minute, so I'm going to mostly talk about what I've finished recently. Um, so I finished a few pairs of socks in the last sort of few weeks, month, um, 
The first of them being these. Now, I do not own sock blockers. I have never blocked a pair of socks in my life. One thing that you may learn if this becomes a thing is I very much am a practical, just get on with it, do things. Like, I like things to look nice, but I do things for a function. Um, so, to my mind, your foot is a sock blocker. So just wear the sock, but do what you like. Um, anyway, these are the Akala socks by Inky Italia. Um, and they are knit in, they have been worn, as you might be able to tell. Um, these are knit in all Wool Matters yarn. So Alice, who's a dyer behind Wool Matters, is based in Somerset, near where I used to live, and she is amazing. And I really recommend checking her out. She stocks her yarn in um, the alternate universe shop in Cleve, which used to be my local yarn shop, and I miss it very much. Um, and and Kim, who runs it, is fab. And then she also has fairly recently started, I think, stocking her yarn in No Frills Knitting in Bristol. So if you're in that direction or have a look online, I recommend Alice's yarn. Um, so. The the main colour of these socks is the Alice's um, sock base, um, Southwest sock, um, or natural sock, sorry, natural sock I think is what she calls it, and it is such a beautiful squishy sock yarn that I think it's going to last really really well. Um, yeah, so it comes from, the wool for this comes from Fernhill Farm, which are based on the Mendips. Um, Andy and Jen, who run the farm, I know very well, and I love their ethos, I love what they do, I've worked with them quite a bit. Um, and yeah, it's, to my mind, what sock yarn should be. Um, I would say local, not quite so local to me now, but it was at the time. Um, and I love it, it's completely natural. They farm, they follow what's called regenerative farming, which I'm sure in the future I think I might do a video all about that, I've got lots of ideas in my head. Um, my parents also farm in this way, this kind of line of thinking of farming, thinking about the soil and how we can actually nurture an ecosystem rather than just fighting against it and going, I want this crop now, I want this animal in this way, but working with the land you have and using lots of different animals and lots of different plants to work with the land effectively but we can talk more about that another time if people are interested um anyway socks i get distracted a lot um the toes and the very little little cuffs of these socks are the absolute leftovers i like used up the entire skein after using it on two other projects which i'm sure i'll share at another point of the southwest dk southwest four ply which is another of Alice's bases, which is also yarn from all from the southwest, and it's just very lightly bundle dyed with little tiny speckles, and I love it. So that's them. Sock pair number one, and the second pair of socks I want to share that I've finished recently are these big chunky boys. Um, these are my version of the Snowshoe Socks by Emily Foden. This is the second time I've knit the pattern. I knit them the first time for my sister and she loves them. She lives in her wellies, so big thick socks are the thing to wear. Um, and these are knit with some of my hand spun, which is why they're not actually perfectly the same size. Should I knit these things? Possibly not, but I like to be honest and they function, like I was saying before, if they function, that's what matters. They don't feel odd when I wear them, um, so it's fine, is it not? Um, yeah, so the yarn for these sort of came out a bit more iron weight than I think the DK gauge that the pants intended for, but that's fine. Um, so they're just a basic rib sock, that's showing the colour fairly well. Um, not perfectly the same because the wool for these socks is um, actually from one of the coloured Leicester long wool ewes that are owned by the shearing contractor I've previously worked for. So it's quite exciting to have a whole fleece of absolutely gorgeous fibre that I've done quite a lot of things with and I'm sure I'll share more. Um, I don't think I have any of the other things with me now but 
yeah, and I've got most of the fleece left still. There's so much of it because of the big long fleece. So that's quite exciting. Um, definitely a perk of the job, being into the fibre craft side of things. You can pick up some woolly goodies along the way and try to restrain yourself and not pick up too many. Um, yes. So, love these socks. I think I'm gonna have to make some again. Might have to make some to send back to the old boss so that he's got some socks from his own sheep's wool. And I think that would be quite cool. So yeah, till then. What are we gonna talk about next? So, I think next I'll get this, this, my possibly favorite thing I have ever knitted. Sorry, I told me into the scarf, you probably can't hear me. Possibly the most favorite thing I've ever knitted. This is the, oh, the fringe is in a tangle. Um, this is the Piano Shawl by Alexandra Table, or Two of Wands, I think is her kind of designer name. Um, I saw this pattern absolutely ages ago and loved it. And it's been quite a long process of planning what yarn to use, spinning some of the yarn, dyeing some of the yarn, because I wanted it to be all natural colours or all naturally dyed and as local as I could do. So I'll just talk you through all of the colours because I'm quite excited by it. And if you've gotten this far listening to me, I'd hope you're interested in wool at this point. So fluff. Um, I'm going to just talk through it. So the this creamy color which is kind of my main background color is some undyed dk lambs wool from a really local farm to me back in devon they're called shoot lake farm s-h-u-t-e lake shoot lake farm i'll try and remember to put links to things um you can follow them on instagram they have yeah they've got really cool sheep and they got their lambs wool spun up which is Oh, what is it? It's a South Down Cross, I think. This is really bad. I normally, sheep breeds are a thing I'm weirdly obsessed with, and I normally remember them all. But I knit so many things <laughs> that it's slightly fallen out my brain. Um, anyway, very, very local yarn to me, um, and I love it. It's only stocked by Sandra in Timeless, which is a yarn shop in Tiverton in Devon. So, but if you go looking online, I'm sure you'll find them. Um, yeah, so then to just go through the other colours, this is some of my, these creamy colours, which, and this here, um, I think that's it, yeah, are some of my first ever hand spun when I was learning to spin. Um, before I got my spinning wheel, it was all done on my drop spindle, which I still love and use sometimes. Um, this is some Romney from Romney Marsh in Kent. And they they sell it as like bats ready to spin. So I bought some of that, and that was my first experience in spinning, and I loved it. And I would really recommend Romney as a starting fibre because it's quite long staple. It's not hugely crimpy, but it like it's just easy to spin in my experience. So recommend that. And then I dyed it with acorns, so that's what the nice little beigey colour is. So the next one was just a little peek of here is some more of Alice's Wool Matters yarn. So this is Southwest DK in the colour Verona. And I've got another skein of this I need to decide what to do with, but we'll decide down the line. Um, and I just love this colour. And I think it's dyed with, I want to say madder, but I might be wrong. Um, yeah, and then the next one is this is some Shetland that I got from Highland Colours on Etsy. Um, they sell little bats ready for spinning and hand spun as well. If you're not into spinning but want to knit with some hand spun. Um, and this is Shetland wool dyed with cochineal, like the little beetles. Which I thought was a really jazzy little candy floss pink. The bats before I spun it literally look like candy floss, so it's quite cool. Um, yeah. And then the next is, this is some Blueface Leicester cross, well, three quarters Blueface Leicester from a farm that we shear for in, used to shear for in Somerset when I worked as a contractor. 
So that's a big patch of it. And I spun this. I didn't card it. I just spun it from the locks. So that's why there's quite a lot of texture going on. Um, yeah. And then I dyed it in the fleece before I did anything. I dyed it with onion skins. Just chucked it on the bath. And that's got me a bit of a mottled colour. Which I like. Um, the next two bits are both. These two are both dyed with. This is more of the Romney, I think. They're both dyed with. Uh, red onion skins which it doesn't look as green as it actually is I don't think in the image but this this was a white yarn and then this grey which probably got a better bit off over here um, this was a grey Suffolk from Fibre Hut and the greeny colour on the grey just gave that really deep I like it really deep sort of colour but yeah that is so that is all of the colours on this slightly huge scarf slash shawl which just is very very cozy and also doubles as a lap blanket and I love it so yeah that's that I might keep that one Ooh, shifting um might keep that on my knee to keep me warm because it's a little bit chilly this is a lot of talking but I think we're getting there um what's next what is next so Another big project, which I also love, and I wore it yesterday. Um, this is another Emily Foden pattern, um, which you may have seen. It's, mine is quite inspired by Kat from Heather and Hop's version. Um, this is the East Wind jacket, and I absolutely love it. It is super big and cosy and very very warm perfect it's perfect for this time of year where it's not like yeah you just need a big thick jacket as opposed to like a full-on winter coat and waterproofs because I spend an awful lot of my life in waterproofs so it's nice to be able to just wear a wool jacket um so it's knit out of uh two strands of yarn which you can see there um, so it's knit from the lighter grey is West Yorkshire Spinners Fleece DK and the darker grey is Marina Skewer who also has an awesome podcast that I love and is one of the first podcasts that I really got into. Um, yeah, that is the darker grey is her Kaya Baby Alpaca um, which now Marina is back from maternity leave I might have to go shopping again sometime soon. Um, and then the accent colour, you might recognise. It is, and for the inside of the pockets, um, it is some more of the Verona Southwest DK from All Matters because I kind of made these two at the same time and wanted them to be a bit of a sneaky pairing, go together type situation, which I think we've succeeded in. And I, I do wear them together quite a lot. So that's that. Oh, buttons. The buttons are from the Somerset Carpenter on Etsy. Yes, Etsy. And they're just huge, chunky, rustic wood buttons. And I love them. The only real issue with this pattern, to my mind, is um, the hem, which is sitting quite nicely here, but in other bits. I've blocked it quite aggressively, um, but it just flicks up a bit because it's just like one ridge of garter rather than proper full-on edging um, so it pings up a bit and this bit goes like that but it's fine it's a rustic jacket I'm a quite a rustic person so it's fine <laughs> the other thing I did with it was when I knit the collar the actual pattern the shoulders come in and then the collar sort of just sticks up and it sat really weirdly on me so it's quite a wide neckline it was wider than this before i edited it and it just just stuck up here and it looked really stupid so i literally folded the edges in stitched a line across where i want like where i knew how it would sit more nicely with a more gentle slope um and then needle felted it because it's all natural fibers um just needle felted it like mad um, and just cut off that triangle so I had like the fluffy bit that was here where it was previously like this 
Um, I just pelted it, cut it off, and now it fits fine. I might have to do a few pictures in this because I haven't actually shared the finished thing on Instagram, which um, tends to be my place for sharing woolly things because I just, I love seeing other people's finished things and I figure it's, it's quite fun to join in with that. So that's the thing. Um, I think I'm going to call myself Sheep and Stitches on YouTube on here and my Instagram handle is also Sheep and Stitches, just to keep it simple. Um, so you can go and find me over there if that's if you're interested. Um, I'm probably thinking about trying to post maybe one video a month, if it works. Um, if I get into this and then... Um, but I sometimes post more stuff on Instagram. I'm quite... I'm not into putting out content for the sake of creating content. It's not really my vibe. I just... I like to be a bit more authentic maybe about it and if it's something I genuinely want to share I share it if I finish something I'm excited about I'll take some cool pictures if I can um or just in my house wherever wherever suits depending on if it's tipping it down outside um yeah so sheep and stitches on instagram as well if you're interested in having a look so yeah that is my east wind jacket which I love very much. Cool. I think that's all of the finished things I'm going to share. And it felt like quite a lot. I feel like I've been talking quite a lot, so I don't want to bore everybody stiff. But I will talk about one work in progress, which is being kept in my new project bag. I don't really have many project bags. I mostly just use like little cotton drawstring bags that I've collected up over time. But I treated myself. I went to Perth Yarn Festival, which was a few weeks ago when I first moved up um, and when I first moved up to Scotland and yeah I treated myself I told myself I could buy a project bag and I went for this little bucket bag which has a project in um, by oh, can you see it there it is uh, the silly sheep fiber company I'm not sure if that focuses very well that's better I think not sure if it's gonna be backwards no, it should flip itself. It should flip itself. Anyway, it's their own tweed made using their own wool and lined with possibly a cotton, just basic lining. So in this in this bag, I'm just using it to hold. So I did have my sock project in there. It's really handy for you can either walk and knit, which is my plan. When I'm out with a dog, I can just take this on my shoulder, really easy, and just carry it along. And because it's open, you can just shove it back in if the dog's being an idiot and you need to deal with him. Um, yeah, so that is that, and I love it. Or you can just hook it over something, flip it onto something, and work with the ball of yarn in there. These mittens are, I haven't actually remembered what the pattern is called, but it's a free mitten pattern I found on Ravelry. Um, with the intention of using these for work so I'm a large animal vet and being out in the winter you get cold hands and cold feet a lot hence this <laughs> so the idea is if I'm standing around chatting I can put the mittens down and keep myself cozy and then if I'm doing non messy jobs reasonably non messy jobs I can Tuck, oh dear. I can tuck them up again and have my fingers out and can do whatever mad vet things are happening that day. Yeah. So finish one mitten. The other mitten is getting there. Just need to finish the rib at the top and then do some sock stitches on hold. And I just made them with quite a long, longer cuff than what they said, so that I could have really nice warm wrists and not get that annoying gap like between your sleeves and your mittens to keep warm. So that's the plan. Oh sorry the needle is clacking. Oh the yarn, oops my ball of yarn, let's hand around and looking a bit squiggly, um, is some West Yorkshire Spinners fleece 
dk. So uh, Jacob's fleece. Oh, sorry. It's Um, which is the same yarn as the grey from my east wind, but it's the brown, dark brown colour, brown black. It's always dark, whereas that I think is the mid grey. Yes, so that is a lot of talking. Um, I think that going forward, I would quite like to kind of, as well as sharing what I'm working on, do some like categorised videos because I want. To I want it to be structured and I want to not just, as much as I personally actually love sitting and just listening to people talk about what they're knitting, what they've finished, seeing beautiful model shots of them, I want to be quite structured and have like, these are all my socks I've ever made and these are the yarns that I like the best and these are the ones that fell apart and these are the ones that didn't fall apart. Um, and maybe something on like all of the i've quite into my short sleeved jumpers um so maybe share all of them and yeah so lots of ideas but yeah for now i'm gonna talk about spinning i've got a very vague rough list here of things Oops. um just because i'm prone to going on a complete meandering randomness okay so I have I'll show you the finished one first Oop. I have just finished spinning up this pile of floof which is one of my acquisitions from traveling around the women's farms in Somerset um, so this is some Dutch spotted so I might try and, if I can be intelligent, I might try and put some pictures on when I mention breeds so you actually have an idea of what sheep are like. I might do also a video on sheep breeds at some point if that's something, if this develops. I have so many ideas, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, so this is some Dutch spotted. They are, as the name suggests, a spotty sheep. So I have just blended all of the colours in together and got this kind of very vaguely barber fold um, effect. It's a three ply yarn. It's coming out at maybe a worsted weight. It's like a heavy DK, um, I would say. My spinning is not perfect, but that's pretty much what it is. DK to heavy DK. Um, yeah, three ply, and I've got about 180 meters. I was gonna make socks. Not sure if it's the best yarn for socks, I think it would be quite strong, but I'm just not convinced. So it might become something else. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens with it, but I'm sure it will find a home. But for now, I've just got a big, a big podgy skein of, yeah, of hand spun happiness that I'll find a home for. I do quite often spin things just because I've picked up a fibre and it wants to be spun in a certain way and that's what I do so that's that please um, so, that so my current spinning project is a bit of a marathon shall we say and I've just buried the bobbin that I was going to show you here it is so I picked up when I was working a we went to a farm that had, I can't remember what they were, Highlander sheep, which is a commercial breed that you've probably never heard of if your interest in sheep is spinning and knitting related. The fibre is actually quite nice and my parents keep some, so I've got a fleece from home that I will do something with at some point that I shared. Um, anyway, they, they also had some Shetlands and Shetland crosses and one of them was a, forgive me for not knowing the correct Shetland terms, fawn coloured Shetland ram, um, that's what I'm calling it anyway, Shetland people will probably tell me the correct name and I'm sorry, <laughs> um, yeah, so this is possibly some of the finest fibre I've ever spun with, I tend to go for really like rustic British breeds as a lot of British wool is more coarse, this blue faced Leicester for example is really soft, this Shetland's really soft, 
this Leicester long wool is, I would call it soft. It's woolly and rustic, but I personally can wear it sort of, probably couldn't wear it right against my neck if I got a bit warm, but I could definitely wear it as a hat, mittens, socks, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, I'm spinning some Shetland. It's a little ram fleece. And because the breed of sheep they have on the farm and the way their management system is, the sheep are shorn twice a year. So this is from when we sheared them in April um, and I was um, packing the wool. So Shetland is a reasonable length staple. I'm just pulling some out. But this is really, really quite short. I'm not sure if you can see. Hold on. This is the fleece, which I think is beautiful. Um, it's focusing on my face, not the wool. Come on. Ish, you get the idea. So, it is really short stapled. Um, there's a gorgeous crimp to it. I love it. Um, do, 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 please focus. And a bit of straw. This is the joys of working with a properly natural product. Whoops, the bobbin is nearly flying away. Um, so, I'm not carding this fleece. I am literally just pulling it apart to floof it up. Quite a lot of this is involved until it gets really quite floofy and it needs to be quite well floofed for the fibres to grip one another because it's such a short staple else spinning it is a nightmare. Um, it's forced me to slow down my spinning a lot. I'm naturally quite a fast spinner, um, but it's taken me quite a while to spin this bobbin. So I'm gonna do a second bobbin and then ply them. I've, but I'm committed to this and I'm saying this and I will finish it because I really want a big floofy jumper. And I made myself a little swatch. So this cone of mohair sitting here, which I found in a charity shop and I bought for one pound. Um, it is 84% mohair, 8% wool and 8% nylon. And it's actually, it's quite soft. It's not like insanely soft, but it's quite soft. Um, this is weird because when I watch podcasts, I quite often get, not irritated, that's the wrong word, quite often wonder what the obsession with soft is because I really like rustic wools and something being too almost synthetically soft puts me off of things. But I feel like I just want to explain a little bit so you get what I'm saying. But yeah, it would probably be quite prickly for people that struggle with mohair or can't deal with rustic things but I'm gonna make a jumper so it's not like it'll be like up here or like on my head um, so I spun myself a little sample ball of yarn because of the way I've prepared it or not prepared it and um, how it is it's quite textured and not really yeah, just quite textured and not the most even spun, but I'm going to pair it with the mohair um, to strengthen it and just to make a nice, oh, wrong side, thick fabric. So this is, that's probably a bit more accurate for the colour, that is it spun together, knit on 7mm needles. I think I'm going to make the White Mountain, I think it's called White Mountain Jumper by Midori Hirose. I loved it when I knit this pattern of hers, I've also knit a ranunculus because who hasn't? Um, and I think, I think I'm going to just about have enough of, I'll have loads of the cone, but it's whether I have enough floof, um, which is another reason I'm trying to spin it so very fine, um, yeah, to hopefully eke out enough yardage. Um, but I really love this fabric, so something on 7mm needles will be the answer, I think very cozy. I, I've, ne I've never actually, the only thing I've knit in mohair is my ranunculus, which is another Wool Matters yarn um, that she did that was a blend of, I think, 70% mohair, 30% lamb's wool, um, something like that. So it's not a halo -y, as halo-y as this Doo -doo, type of mohair. It's 
it's halo-y, but nothing like this level. It's not a mohair fluke, it's just a mohair yarn, um, if that makes sense. I'm waffling. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is that. That's future plans. I think the last thing I'm going to share is a little bit about my trip to Perth Yarn Festival. It's the second yarn, no, that's like the third yarn festival I've been to. The first was absolutely donkey's years ago when Bristol Yarn Festival existed and I went with my auntie and my grandma when I was quite young and then I went to Fernhill Farm host their own little fibre festival called Fibre Quest which I really recommend, really good local. They have shearing demonstrations on and other little workshops doing woolly things and Fernhill are just fab. Um, yeah, so Perth Yarn Festival I'm just moving all these little things so I can actually get to the things I got. I went on my own, which I actually quite like going to things on my own and then I can look at things for as long as I want to and not feel guilty about spending money on yarn. And, um, and I think it gives me more opportunity to talk to people because you don't feel like you have to just stick with the one person you're with or whatever it is. But yeah. Anyway, I spoke to loads of awesome people. Um, I met Kat from Heather and Hops, who I've chatted to online for on and off for a bit, and she was fab. And I met Alex from the Ancestral Crafts podcast, and Alex is just fab as well. I'd really quite like to meet up with her again if we can, because um, she won't be that far away from me now. Um, who else did I meet? Um, Caroline from the Caroline Knits podcast. We chatted about dogs for quite a while because we both have crazy collie cross dogs. Um, so that was always good fun. And briefly met Rebecca from the Cray Bear podcast and um, lots of other people. I met a couple, a couple of other people that I spent quite a lot of time chatting to through the day and that was really exciting. So one of those people was Kerry. Kerry? I really can't pronounce your name, I'm sorry. But she's the wool and thistle on Instagram. And she was wearing the most gorgeous, like, short sleeve tunic top. And I basically, at that point, immediately decided I needed to make it. Hers was in a dark green yarn that I can't remember what it was. Either way, I, that very day, went and purchased myself some yarn to make it. The pattern is Ucho. UJO by Liner Magazine issue 2. Well, in Liner Magazine issue 2. And this is my yarn. How beautiful. I have a slight obsession with naturally coloured yarn, if you haven't figured. Um, but this is from Lamamure Fox, which it is mostly Shetland. Uh, where is it? Yeah. So it's mostly Shetland blended with, with a little bit of Gotland and the just the natural it's very really lovely and soft and a very kind of light yarn but i think it should be reasonably well hard wearing the gotland should be quite hard wearing i think um yeah so this is my next cast on i do believe because i don't have anything really big on the needles at the minute i'm kind of craving endless miles of stockinette that this project will be in the round so yes that is that and just a few other things quickly that I got um, one was a completely new to me Daya I think she's been going a little while um, but I cannot remember her name but Unaru, whoopsie, Unaru Designs is her company and I started chatting to her on the stand and she basically immediately was like, British wool is amazing. And I was like, I want to buy your yarn because you think British wool is amazing. So I did. Um, this is a skein of white face woodland in the color doo -doo -doo, Stormy Seas. And I think it's going to become a pair of snowshoe socks because I, I, the white face woodland should be quite hard wearing. And I just love it. It's going to become socks of some description anyway, because it's one skein, and I think it needs something like that. Yes. And then I also bought some actual sock yarn from 
um, do, do, okay, finesse craft yarn, um, which is a Suffolk alpaca and rose fibre four ply yarn. It's, oop, I can use it. It's kind of rope like, but without being rough and rope like. It just feels like it's going to last. Um, yeah, 50% Suffolk, which is quite a strong. It's a down wool, so that adds a bit of poofiness to it, and it's a reasonably hard wearing wool. Then the alpaca is really soft and insulating, and then the rose fibre is also for strength. Um, just 10% rose fibre, 40% alpaca. And I think I'm going to experiment with naturally dyeing it a colour, which I will decide at some point or well decide what I'm going to dye it with the colour seems to just go on its own little adventure with natural dyeing which I kind of quite like and then the last wool that I want to share that I bought was from the brilliant Sue of Hawkshaw Sheep my boss here told me the local way to pronounce it properly but Hawkshaw Sheep is what you're getting from me so this is 100% British wool this is um, Shetland and Hebridean. Do, do, do. So we've got a bit of a darkness in there. The Shetland are Sue's own sheep, I believe, and the Hebrideans are just some some more like local local sheep. Um, and they're actually really quite close to me where I live now. So that's good to know a new local yarn supplier to keep me entertained. I got three skeins of this, and the original plan was a stripy jumper, but those plans are currently floating around. So. I need to do more thinking on a big, chunky, iron weight jumper using three skeins of this, and then I've got my eye on some iron weight Jacob blend that I found online. So, ideas, 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 ideas. Anyway, I think I've talked for more than long enough, and I hope that the things I talked about were interesting, and I hope that. We can see my candle flickering. Um, I hope that things I talked about were interesting. If this goes out into the big wide world of the internet, oops, I just kicked my stand. If this goes into the big wild world of the internet and people are interested, tell me what you want to talk about. Like, do any of these things I've talked about interest you? Like, I feel there's a lot of people talking about sustainability in clothes and fiber and there's some cool things being talked about um, but I don't know that there's many people podcasting anyway that are coming at it from a I actually work with sheep farms and this is what it's like and this is how they are being sustainable and this is how we can help them be more sustainable um, kind of viewpoint because that's if you can't tell what I'm really quite passionate about and the fact that like when I asked for this Dutch spotted fleece um, the lady was like, take as much as you like, I have no use for it. And that's quite frankly the attitude I get from most farmers that I ask if I can take some wool. Um, which, on one level, in a selfish way, that's great because I can just gather all of the wool. But we should have a market for this stuff. Like, it might not be merino, but if you're going to make some big thick boot socks, Quite frankly, you don't actually want merino because merino is such a fine fibre that it wears through quite easily. Hence the whole, we add nylon to the classic merino nylon sock to make it actually last. Um, but if you're using something like a long wool fibre that in itself is really strong, we don't need to put plastic in our socks. Um, but anyway, I'm going to stop ranting now because that's where this might be dangerous going. <laughs> and just go and enjoy some squishy wool and I hope that you enjoyed listening to me chat about all of this stuff if you got to the end well done um, and I might talk to you again soon tell me if you want me to cheers <laughs>